All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking. In the last video, we learned about arrays and sets. In this video, we're gonna look at dictionaries. Dictionaries are another collection, another way to group a whole bunch of pieces of data together. They work a little differently than arrays and they have basically different use cases. Um, I'm gonna cover as many of those cases as I can in this quick intro video. The high level things to point out here is that dictionaries are based on keys, not indexes. So when we worked with an array, we had these indexes of zero, one, two, three. We don't have that when we're working with dictionaries. Instead, we have keys. So it's literally, you can think of it like a dictionary. If you were to open up a dictionary, you would look for the word and then read the definition. And so when we're working with dictionaries in code, we're gonna have a key, it's gonna be what we're looking for, and then we're gonna have a value, which is like the definition. So we're gonna look for the key, and then it's gonna give us the value. It's going to give us the definition back. Dictionaries are incredibly fast. They're one of the fastest ways to access data in software engineering. And so it is definitely important to have a grip on how dictionaries work. I will say that they're probably less common than arrays. So because arrays have those indexes, the data is always in a specific order. And that gets pretty important if we're going to put data on the screen. We usually want that data to be in a specific order. But if we don't care about that order, then dictionaries are a great alternative because dictionaries are actually not ordered, but they are safer to use. So in arrays, if we accessed an index that was outside of the bounds of the array, it would crash our application. We don't have that problem when working with dictionaries. And so let's jump into the code here and create a dictionary. Welcome back everyone. My name is Nick again. This is Swiffle Thinking and we're almost done with this playlist. In the last video, we looked at arrays and a little bit of sets. We're gonna build on that in this video, but we're gonna focus on a dictionary, so, which is another collection of pieces of data. Let's start this off by creating a new file, new playground page, and let's call this dictionaries. And I'm gonna delete this code. I'm gonna delete this code. I'm actually going to start with the code that we ended in the last video. So I'm going to copy these, this array and this set, and then move it here. If you were not with me in the last video, just go ahead and type both of these out. And I want to run this again, but we should recognize that this is an array of string and this is a set of string. And so when we run these, the array prints out in the exact same order that we had it. And the array is allowed to have duplicate items. So we have two apples, right? The set was in this order, but it printed out in a different order because sets are not ordered where arrays are. Sets also cannot have two of the same item. So sets are deduplicated. So there's only one apple in the final version here that we printed out. We're going to now look at dictionaries. And so dictionaries are closer to sets in that they are not ordered. However, dictionaries have what's called keys and those keys cannot be duplicated. So a dictionary can have duplicate of the same value, but not a duplicate of the same key. And let's take a dive into dictionaries now. Let's create a variable called my first dictionary. And this is going to be of type. We're going to make it, it looks kind of like an array except there's going to be two types in here. There's going to be the first type, which we'll use a string, and we're going to use a colon, and then we're going to add in a second type, which for now we'll just make a Boolean. All right, so when we see this, this is an array. So it has one item, and it's in the square brackets. This, however, with the colon in the middle, is actually a dictionary. And what this is saying is that in this dictionary, we're going to have objects where the key is a string and the value is a Boolean. So the key and the value is how we reference these in a dictionary. I will set this equal to a dictionary here and let's add some items in here. So the first item, so let's give this one a key of maybe apple and we'll give it a value of true. And then another one with the key of orange and a value of false. All right, so, so this looks super funky if you've never used a dictionary before. 
I try to think about it like an actual dictionary. If you're opening up a dictionary and you're going to look up a word, you're going to first find the, the key or the word that you're looking for. And then you're going to read the value, the definition of what you're trying to find. And so here, the key is Apple and the value that we're going to get back is the associated value, this Boolean. So when we were working with this final fruits, if we wanted to get the second item in an array, we would say something like let item equals final fruits and we access the first index, which is the second item of the array. For a dictionary, however, if we want to say let item, and I'll comment this out, if we want to get the item at orange, we will access the dictionary. So my first dictionary. And instead of putting in an index, because again, the dictionaries are not ordered, so there is no index, but we can put in a key. So this is a key and this is a key. So here we said the keys are strings. And so this key would be orange. And so if I run this now, item is false because orange the, at the key orange is the value false. And it might be easier to understand this if I put these on separate lines. So we could put, think of it like this. We have key and we have value. We have a key and we have a value. And we can add in as many keys and value pairs as we want up to infinity. Just like an array, this can hold a ton of data. One of the main differences though, is that for the fruits array, I will comment this out. When we were looking at this, let's actually call this, I don't know, my fruit. When we access items at the index, if I hold the option button and click on fruit, we can see that string is not optional, right? So again, if we access a bad index, we're going to crash our app. But because of this, the benefit means that if we do access an index, the value we're going to get is not optional. It's actually a real value. So although it might crash our app, there is a slight benefit that when we get the value, it's not optional because if it doesn't crash, then we know that there actually is a value. Dictionaries do not work like that. Dictionaries are the opposite. If I access this key, it is actually safe to access, even if the dictionary doesn't have it. So you can look up any word in the dictionary. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in the dictionary. So here, if I look at item, we can see the item is an optional bool. Whereas if it was an array of bools, the, the items we get are not optional. Here, the items we get are optional. So for example, I could look up banana. And we know there is no banana in this dictionary, but it's not going to crash our app. Instead, this will just be nil, the optional value, because there is no value for key banana in this dictionary. Let's do another example of a dictionary, maybe with some different types. So here I can do a dictionary. Let's call this another dictionary. Why not? Maybe we want to make the keys integers and the value strings. So now I could say at key zero, let's return Apple. And at key maybe 176, let's return banana. And so when I access, I can say let item two equals another dictionary and let's access the key 176. And let's run this and I can see that this says banana. If I go for key, maybe 86, there's nothing there and it's just going to be nil, but it's not going to crash our app. Now, this is a fundamental difference here. We're saying the keys are integers. We are not accessing indexes, right? So this looks like we're accessing an index. It looks just like this, but it's not because the type here is an array. The type here is a dictionary. And generally, we would never really make a number as the key in a dictionary. It is almost always a string. But I wanted to just point out that difference to you guys. So here we could do a dictionary of string string. And maybe we have special IDs for each of these pieces of data. So ID, I don't know, ABC, and then ID DEF. So this is a dictionary, keys of strings, values of strings. And when I access this dictionary, again, Swift here being type safe, it knows that the key in this dictionary is a string, 
but we're trying to access the key of a number here, of an integer. So if I change this to a string and maybe we access ABC, then of course it's going to compile and then we get the value of apple. So the things to watch out for in dictionaries is that we cannot have two of the same key. So if I have here two, two keys that are the same, even if the value is different, so maybe this is a mango, if I go to run this, it's going to crash our application. And that's because if we're accessing something at a key, the, the compiler needs to know exactly which object to get at the key. And if there are two of the same key, it would never know whether we're trying to get this one or trying to get this one. So a dictionary cannot have two of the same key. It can, however, have two of the same value. So I could create another one here. So we can say we can do X, Y, Z maybe, and also make this Apple. Now this does work. So we have two of the same value. As long as they're not two of the same key, it's okay. Just like the array, we want to be able to add and remove from the dictionary. So in order to add an item to the dictionary, you would think we would call append, but it's not an array. So again, an array was ordered, right? So when we added items to the array, we had to tell it exactly where we wanted to add it. We could append to the end of the array, or you could insert at a specific index. But when we are adding to a dictionary, there is no order of the dictionary. There's just keys and values. And so when we add to a dictionary, all we need to do is tell it which key to add it to. So in here, if instead of adding this here, maybe I wanted to add in a new value at key X, Y, Z, I could set it equal to whatever I want. Let's go with mango. So down here, if I print out another dictionary, we can see that when the dictionary comes through the console, the key X, Y, Z is now equal to mango. So this is how we add to a dictionary and we can also remove values from a dictionary, but again, we're not using an array. So we don't remove at an index. We remove at a key. So another dictionary dot remove value for key. So it's asking us what key do we want to remove at? So let's maybe remove banana. So that's key D E F. Let's go ahead and run this. And now our final dictionary doesn't have banana in it anymore. Again, it's important to point out here that this dictionary is not ordered. So even though A comes before D in the alphabet, when we are printing it out, there is no specific order for this. So the final question to kind of bring up here is why would we use an array versus a dictionary? When should we use one or the other? Well, I would say most of the time, Arrays are the most common, and that's primarily because when we're working with data, especially if the data is going on the screen, we generally want to keep that data in a specific order. So if you're going to put a list of restaurants on the screen, there's probably an order that you want to put those restaurants in. And so since there's an order, we would use an array so that we can keep that order. However, accessing items in a dictionary is very, very, very fast. It's one of the fastest things you could do in computer programming. So if we have really, really large sets of data and all of that data has a unique key, so maybe those every piece of data in there has an ID, then we could use a dictionary because when we access items in the dictionary, we don't need to first check if there is an item at the index. We can just on a whim access items at a key. And because it returns us back an optional, we never have to worry about that crashing our application. So the short version here is arrays are most common because they keep the data in order, but dictionaries are faster. So there's definitely times where we want to use a dictionary over an array. Going to wrap up this video with just one final example here. So maybe I have in my app a struct that is called maybe a post model, right? So maybe it's Instagram and there's a bunch of posts that are going to be in a feed. Every post will maybe have an ID of type string. When we host these posts in our database, we will probably add an identifier so that each post has a unique ID. And that's how we will move that data around our app. And then every post will also have some other data. So maybe a title of type string and maybe a, a like count of type integer. So now let's create an array. So we can say var post array. 
and it will be of type array of post model. And I can set it equal to an array. All right, and let's create maybe a post model. And generally when we make IDs, they are like randomly generated strings. So I'm just gonna put in here like ABC one, two, three. Let's call this post one, like count of maybe five. And let's create two more. So each one has a unique ID. So this will be maybe DEF, I don't know, six, seven, eight. And this will be XYZ nine, eight, seven. Why not? This will be post two, this will be post three. We'll change out the like counts. And now in my code, if I wanted to access this item at index one, if I wanted to get this item, I would say if post array dot indices contains an element at index one, I will open the brackets and I can say let item equals post array. And then I access the item at index one. I can print here item. This obviously will work, but now let's do the same thing with a dictionary. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say var post dict. I'm going to say dict is a short for dictionary. I think that's more common in applications. It will be a dictionary where the key is a string and the value is a post model. And so this equal to, and let's add in our keys. So I'm going to use the ID as a key. So this will be the ID and the value of this will be the post model. All right, and now let's do this one. So the key here is going to be DEF, six, seven, eight. And let's do the final one, X, Y, Z, and post and paste in our post model. So a little more work to set this up, but now in our code, if we want to access this item, I will say, let my new item equals the post dict at key DEF, six, seven, eight. So I'll run this and we can see now that we got this post model back. We can see it here. Let's actually just print out at the end, my new item. And we should see that the same post model DEF post two is what's printing out. All right. So there are absolutely use cases to use arrays. There are use cases to use dictionaries. You should know both of them. It's not like one or the other, but they each have a superpower. And depending on the situation, you should use one or the other. The things to note at a very high level again are that arrays are ordered. Dictionaries are not ordered. Arrays have indexes. Dictionaries have keys. Dictionaries are slightly faster than arrays. And that is basically it for my spiel on arrays versus dictionaries. Now in the next video, we're going to start talking about four loops. So now that we understand these collections, we understand how arrays and sets and dictionaries work. We can now run code to loop on all of the items in a dictionary or an array and then perform actions. So if we wanted to change every single item, if we wanted to loop on all of these items and maybe change all of their like counts or all of their titles, we're going to learn how to do that. And to do that, we need to add in some new syntax for how to loop on data. So we're going to get into that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.